we got a new e-bike in town another one this is the walkie f1 it is a 26 by 2 inch e-bike with 21 speed gear system so it has two derailers I've not had a bike with this type of system on it at least an e-bike in that regard all right we got the walkie f1 here i've already opened the top of the box but i just wanted to show you some of the stuff inside the box before we unbox it now i'm not going to do a whole video of me pulling this out if you guys want to see that um, you can watch one of my other videos it's the exact same process but there is a big box in here with some accessories looks like you get a lock which is actually feels pretty pretty decent I already have one of these but can never have too many locks your pedals looks like you got a phone holder I'll have to check that out and uh, your manual tools headlight and then your chargers down here yeah, it's just a 48 volt 2 amp charger. I can already tell by looking at it. I actually have a couple of these chargers already. Then they also included a foot pump. Let me grab my cutter, which this is different. I have never received a foot pump before. So that'll be nice. That'll probably be easier than the hand pump I got. Looks like it works for all applications, so I'll check that out. I'll go ahead and pull out the rest of the bike and get it assembled. And then I'll show you an overview of everything. And they want me to make a video about how to remove the speed limiter. Which you have to take the controller off and pull a wire somewhere. So that'll be interesting. This is my second day on the walkie F1. And today we're gonna ride over to my filming spot and we are gonna remove the speed limiter off this bike. To remove the speed limiter, you have to remove a panel off the top of the battery compartment. There's four Phillips screws. You just unscrew four Phillips screws, pull the controller and wiring out, and there's one cable that I believe you have to unplug. Now, of course, the power on the bike's already gonna be off because you have the battery removed, so no worries there. And then after that, we'll see what the top speed is, but Currently it's 20 miles an hour. So after we remove the speed limiter, we should be able to go quite a bit faster. I don't know how much faster, but we'll see what it does. Now, this is a 500 watt Bafeng motor. And it peaks at 900 watts, so it's pretty, pretty decent. All right, one of the things I want to demonstrate on this walkie F1 is the battery. So of course you just unlock it, it pops it up, you grab it, and you take it with you. Now if you want to charge it and leave the battery on the bike itself, you can certainly do that by plugging in right there. Now this is the bottom of the battery where it slides into the base and you'll notice that there is a little cover here and that's your charge port and it's really hard to get this little rubber thing off that I always end up having to grab a knife and prying it open kind of like this.
Now I can plug in the cable. So one thing that I always do is I have my charger connected to a smart plug which basically charges the battery and uh, you can set a timer so you can shut the charger off just in case. All right, today we're out here on the Walkie F1. I've ridden this about, I don't know, five, six miles now and really gotten a feel of how the bike is. And it looks like it's a pretty big bike, but really the frame is, is really short. I kind of like the way that it looks. It's like a miniature version of a of a 26 by 4 inch bike. Now this has a 500 watt Bafang motor in the back and you can see the uh, logo there and it peaks at 900 watts so it's a really good drivetrain. Everything's set up really nice on this bike. Now it's pretty plain it's just black and white just has their name on it and their logo but it does say walkie bike everywhere I've mentioned this in the past I'm not a big fan of when companies plaster their logos every inch of the bike or their name on every inch of the bike and you can see right here just on this one side it says walkie four times so you have walkie on the forks walkie on the main frame walkie down here on the lower frame and then walkie over here right by the top of the tire now this has CST all terrains on it they're pretty decent they're gonna work both street and off-road it does have a front headlight it's decently bright but you're always gonna have to attach a, a different headlight at least in the market right now and as you can see there's no tail light no rear rack and no fenders on this bike now the bike does have front suspension it's got a hundred millimeters of travel and it is locking and you can adjust the preload over here i believe and it does have a hundred millimeters of travel so that's really good it provides a, a pretty big springy distance to go down and back up uh, not all bikes have that much travel so that's a nice feature now you might notice something a little bit different down here with the gears as you can see you have your normal turny shimano system here with seven speeds uh, it is a shimano derailleur so name brand decent not the best but it works good i haven't had any problems with it yet I've heard good things about them lasting quite a while, so as long as you take care of your bike, you should be good. You can see it has another device here, which is another derailleur. And basically, this changes the gearing from three different sizes. So, what is 7 times 3? 21 speeds. Up here on the handlebars, you got two shifters, SIS index seven speed over here and this controls your derailleur on the front you basically just pull on it to go down gears and push up to go up that is something i haven't seen on any e-bike as of recently so for an e-bike to have 21 speeds might be great for off-road i have not taken it off-road yet i may take it off-road we'll see it does have zoom mechanical disc brakes they're only 160 millimeter, but for this style of bike, that might be okay. Now here's the menu, which we still need to remove the plastic on. Always save that for this video. And this will tell you your speedometer, your battery level. It shows your odometer here. You can go through by clicking the M at the top. Go through to your trip, how long you've been on the bike. And your odometer and then you can go up and down your PAS levels by hitting plus and minus now if you go all the way down to zero your throttle does not work and yes this is the throttle it's a thumb throttle built into the display and it's on the left hand side so there's no throttle over here 
And as you can tell, it's got a little bit different style of grips than you normally see on an e-bike. Usually you got your ergo grips on the e-bike, but this is more like a mountain bike style grip. It's not bad. It's it's decently comfortable, and they, they're locking, so they won't move a lot. Now your brake has the um, brake kill switch on it, so if you squeeze your brakes, it kills power to the motor. You push and hold M to turn it on and off. You push and hold plus for a few seconds and it turns your headlight on. It also lights up the display. You push it again to turn that off. And then you push and hold the minus button and that's your walk mode. Now if you push and hold it and you let go, it automatically shuts it off. Which is a pretty cool feature. I haven't seen that before. But if you push and hold it, it's a real nice slow pace. It gradually increases as you're holding. And that's pretty nice. It, it should be easy to uh, walk this with walk mode which is not always the case now you can just use your throttle as you're going and not use walk mode well, that's what I do but that's totally up to you to remove the speed limiter you actually have to remove the battery which we're gonna do today right now so you just have a key that comes with the bike you put it in here and you turn and it pops the battery up a little bit and then you just grab it and if you have a water bottle holder um, it's a little harder to get out I just noticed that so to remove the speed limiter you have to remove the battery pretty simple we're gonna set this over on the table next we're gonna grab our screwdriver and hopefully I can do this with one hand if not, I have my I have my mount. So we have a screw right here that we need to untwist. We have a screw right here we need to untwist. We got a screw here. And then we have one small screw right down here. Alright, we got all four screws unscrewed. And we just this just will fall out basically. That's the cap. Alright, after you take that panel off, you have to remove the lock. And it's right here. It's gold color right here. You need to just twist this and then it pops out from the hole right here. And then you'll come in here and you should be able to pull everything out and find the cable that you need. So next you want to find this wire right here. It is actually right. It was one of the first wires I could get to. So you don't have, even have to take any of this stuff out of here. Um, you can just look for this green and yellow one. It's it's a two-pronged plug with one cable on each side. And you basically just unplug this like so. You just unplug it like this. And then you just separate these two cables so they don't touch. It could be a good idea to wrap this in electrical tape. I don't know if it would do anything if it hit metal, metal or not. Um... I probably will. So then you just take these and you shove them back up in there. Get them out of your way. And then put everything back the way that you had it before. So stick your lock in. This is kind of the tricky part. Maybe if I put it in this way. I don't think that's going to work, is it? Maybe I'll... Alright, well... There you go. That's how you do it. Put the lock in first. And then you're basically screwing in this lock right here on these two bolts or these two screws. So once you get those in place, you should be good. The hardest part was getting that little bitty screw down there in. But we're going to go ahead and slide the battery in. So, make sure the battery stays. Looks like it's locked in place. And we're going to go test this. Let's make sure the bike turns on. <laughs> Never know, I guess. Alright, no more speed limiter. We're going to try this out and see what happens. Now, I'm not too sure about this phone case. At top speed. At 20 miles per hour, maybe. At 25, uh, I don't know. <laughs> 
25 so far with pedal assist five. And we're going to see just how fast we can go. So we haven't gotten above five yet. So let's reset this and go ahead and reset it. Zero miles per hour. This is going to be top speed. Oops. I want to leave that on, right? This is going to be top speed, throttle only. And we're going to try to go around this parking lot and not hit anybody. Here we should be able to max it out. Twenty three miles per hour, top speed, throttle only. Now let's do PAS five and see what happens. Get a little bit faster with PAS. Now I'm ghost pedaling, so. Okay, let's see what our top speed was there at 24. We got one mile per hour faster. Removing the speed limiter did increase the speed a little bit, but not much. All right, here's a few of my bikes, and I just kind of wanted to compare the walkie to the Rydeal and to the EUI. If you look at these two bikes, the walkie just, to me, and in person, looks like a smaller bike. Maybe it's just the way the frame's designed, but if we uh, line these bikes up, if you just look at the overall size comparison, in person, the walkie just looks a lot smaller. Now, the walkie compared to the EUI is actually similar in size, but the EUI looks smaller in person. I think the wheelbase is different. Um, we're gonna measure from the end of the rear tire to the front of the front tire on all three bikes, kind of determine which one's the smallest. So we're gonna measure the wheelbase here. We're gonna go from the front wheel to the back of the rear wheel. That'll give us pretty much the middle. So we're looking at 70 inches from the front to the back on the walkie. On the Rydeal, we're looking at about 71 inches. So not a huge difference um, in that direction. Now the uh, I think this has 27 and a half inch tires. Yeah, so this is a little bit bigger tire and wheel. So that might be why it looks a little bigger. Yeah, 71 on this. We'll do the same thing here. Yeah, these are 20 inch wheels. And this is 62 and a half. So lengthwise, the Rydeal is the tallest because it has bigger tires and maybe that's why it looks bigger but in my eyes it just looks like a bigger bike could be because I have everything on it and this doesn't have anything but this is a pretty short bike all right so this is the walkie f1 and uh, that's a fairly decent bike for the price I think right now 
it's on their website for $13.99 but the price keeps changing so I think that's the retail price I did see a 4th of July sale where it was $9.99 I believe I have a referral link down in the description go down there click on the link and anytime you do that will help support the channel but I've put about uh, 15 miles on this so far and uh, it's a fairly decent bike. It's not anything that's going to win a race or, you know, impress you too much if you're already used to an electric bike. But for an entry-level bike, I think it's great. The suspension works really well. It rides good. Motor is pretty powerful. The Thing's a really good brand. And uh, the components are not cheaped out on. The only thing that strikes me is something that's extremely different than other bikes is the 21 speed gear shifting. Now we removed the speed limit and we hit a top speed of 24 miles per hour. That was both PAS 5 and throttle only. So keep that in mind. If you have any questions about this bike or anything else, go down to the comments section. Let me know your thoughts. If you like this video, hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Please subscribe. Thank you.